Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Woods, and I have the honor of being the Parks Commissioner for the City of Boston. On behalf of Mayor Walsh and everyone at the Parks Department, I want to start by welcoming you all to the dedication of the Major General George W. Casey Amphitheater at Smith Playground. And thank you especially to Harvard for hosting us inside today at the Ed Portal due to the inclement weather. So thank you very much to Harvard. As you may have noticed, we're about a month away from completing the park, but thanks to Mayor Walsh's commitment to open space, we're excited to have an investment of over $6.5 million um, going into this great parks. I want to thank the project team who've worked tirelessly over the past two years to make sure we bring you a park for the neighborhood that you are proud of. In particular, I want to thank the project manager, Kathy Baker Eclipse from the Parks Department. Thank you, Kathy. Stantec Planning and Landscape Architecture, as well as Argus Construction and Pablo Eduardo for all their work on this project. Renovations to this park include sports fields, new walking paths, a splash pad, a street hockey court, skateboard park, BMX bike track, basketball courts, and of course, a spacious amphitheater where performances can be staged year round. There's truly something for everyone here at Smith Playground. Alston's identity is largely defined by its thriving arts community, and this amphitheater will be a place where Alston residents can come together. Whether it be a performance, one of our neighborhood concerts, or even a talent show, this amphitheater will be a place where people come to make memories and build community. That is why we're honored to dedicate such an important neighborhood asset after one of Alston's own, Major General George W. Casey, who grew up roughly 400 yards away from this very location over on Franklin Street. You'll hear more about General Casey's life and legacy throughout the program, and we really want to thank his family for being with us here today, so thank you very much. With that, I welcome you all to stand for the playing of the National Anthem, performed by the West Point Brass Quintet Band, who have traveled all day to be here with us today. And for military in uniform, um, please stand at attention without cover. Please be seated. It's a pleasure to introduce Father Paul Hurley. Father Hurley retired from the US Army just a few weeks ago. He was born in Dorchester, raised in Weymouth, and graduated from the US Military Academy at West Point. He served as a field artillery officer before returning to Boston to attend St. John Seminary and become a Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Boston. He rose to the rank of two-star general, ultimately becoming the Army's chief of chaplains. It's our honor to welcome here today Father Hurley to the podium. Thank you. As I was reflecting on um, this dedication, I was uh, reminded of a uh, great image that comes to us from the uh, book of Joshua in the Old Testament, where the Israelite people had just been brought out of uh, the desert 
And we hear these words from Joshua, from the Lord. Each of you take one stone on your shoulder, corresponding to the number of tribes. And to these stones, make an everlasting reminder of the Israelites, of God and these 12, and their, and their deliverance, their salvation. Today, I thought as we do this dedication, um, we too are dedicating and reminding um, ourselves and our future generations of a goodness that is bestowed upon us that is critical to mark. Uh, and that's exactly what we do in this dedication and this symbolism, uh, reminding us of not just God's goodness, but of the sacrifice and the dedication of uh, all men and women, in particular, uh, as General Casey uh, demonstrates for all of us. And so I pray that this dedication may continue always today and always to be a sign and a reminder of God's goodness, of the sacrifices of so many men and women for the freedom and for the lives that we are all blessed with. And we ask all this through our Lord and God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Just a couple of acknowledgments. I want to acknowledge a couple in the crowd. We have joining us today the Assistant Adjunct General of the Mass National Guard, retired Brigadier General Frank McGurn. Thank you for joining us. as well as retired Brigadier General Father Rich Erickson, U.S. Air Force, who was stationed at St. Anthony's Alston after ordination. <laughs> and we also have the State Commander of the VFW, Jeff Nigerian, also with us here. So thank you, gentlemen. For joining us. It's now my honor to welcome my boss and the greatest parks advocate out there, a mayor who's now made Boston uh, all residents within a 10 minute walk, the second um, city in the United States, first on the East Coast, so all residents are now within a 10 minute walk from their front door to a park. Please help me join me in welcoming the mayor of Boston, Martin. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan, and um, thank you for the introduction. And when, I, when Ryan was talking about 10 minutes from a park, the governor's like, wow, I see. We were about a month shy of beating Seattle, but we, on the East Coast, we're number one. So uh, I want to thank, thank the Parks Department uh, for the incredible work that they do. Ryan uh, talked about the generous budget that, that we'll be able to work on, but our Parks Department's been able to do some incredible work in the city of Boston. And it seems like two years ago, we were breaking ground on all kinds of different open space in the city of Boston, and two years later, we're cutting ribbons on a lot of things. So I want to thank the entire Parks Department, and I want to give a shout out to, to um, Chris Cook, the, the, the chief, environment, chief, environments, uh, chief of Environment for the City of Boston. Thank you, Chris, for your stuff and work as well. <laughs> I want to thank the governor for being here with us today. Uh, I want to thank Father Major General Paul Hurley, uh, Tom Keaty from Boston College, Brian Kincannon, the civilian aide to the uh, Secretary of the Army. Uh, I want to thank our own Brian Golden, uh, who is a colonel, but also the director of the Boston Plan Development Agency. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I also want to mention when we talk about the budget uh, and, and the budget that we have for Parks Department, uh, it, it's led by the help of, of all of us in the City Council. Uh, City Council Mark Sioma, Chairman of Ways and Means, is with us today. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> city Council Ed Flynn, Chairman of the Veterans Committee in the City Hall and City Council. <laughs> State Representative Kevin Honan is with us today. <laughs> From Brighton District Court, but I know him uh, best as being part of the coffee club at the State House. Uh, Judge Donnelly is with us today. <laughs> the Commissioner of the Boston Fire Department, Joe Finn, is with us today. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not going to name every single person in the room today. <laughs> 
Uh, the Commissioner of Registered Affairs, uh, John Sedaro, is with us today. Mr. Sandy, Rob Santiago. Sorry, Ron. Uh, and there's so many other folks here that I'd love to mention, but thank you. Uh, thank you to Harvard uh, for hosting us today because uh, we wanted to be outside, uh, but the rain is coming through. Uh, to the residents of this great neighborhood, uh, thank you for, for, for what you do, for your advocacy, uh, for, for pushing us and pushing the state and pushing the city to make sure that our green space is the best, I have to say. One of the best neighborhoods in the city of Boston that, that our green space is, is right here in this community, and that's because of the advocates here so, and, the, and the residents. So thank you very much, Austin Brighton residents. For being here today. A special thank you to the family of Major General Casey. Uh, General George W. Casey, Jr. is here with us today. Uh, thank you for being with us today. And I know uh, in, uh, in, uh, in spirit, uh, Ms. Elaine Casey Murphy uh, is, is with us today, although she couldn't be here today because of her illness. So we want to pass along our, condone, uh, our, our prayers. Um, we are grateful for her service as a military spouse and mother who was widowed at a very, very young age. Uh, and I also want to thank all the military men and women in this, in this great uh, amphitheater here today for your service to our country, uh, the men and women in uniform and the men and women, men and women retired. Uh, thank you for your service to our country. Because if it wasn't for you, we would not have this beautiful country that we're in today. So thank you. We also remember today General George W. Casey's parents who raised their children not block, blocks from here, as Ryan mentioned. Uh, his father worked as a doctor and cared for people at St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Both parents were pillars of the church of St. at St. Anthony's. They taught their children to love their community and love their country. Uh, Major General Casey embodies those ideals. He would go on to serve the United States military for 25 years and gave his life for our country. His memory will live in Boston, especially here in Austin, the neighborhood that he loved so dearly forever. Robert F. Kennedy often spoke about the meaning of service. He said, few will bend history itself, but each of us can work to change a small portion of events in the total of those acts will be written the history of this generation. Major General Casey was certainly one of those people who helped change history. In fact, Bobby Kennedy and George Casey were born just a few years and a few miles apart. They both, both joined up around the same time. This place has produced many great Americans who've changed the world for the better. And we will not forget their impact, nor should we ever forget their impact. Major General Casey's impact is felt all over the city. At Boston Latin School, where he was a student, on Franklin Street, where he grew up, in the hearts of those who served alongside him, and right here in this beautiful new neighborhood, the amphitheater, right down the street. We will keep those stories alive. We will never forget the, these sacrifices, and we'll keep supporting military families. And we'll keep reaching out to our veterans to make sure that they all hear those two very important words that they didn't always hear. And those words are thank you. I'm very proud what we've created here. On behalf of the city of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I want to thank everyone who helped make this happening today, including the Casey family, the residents of Austin, the Boston Parks Department, Boston College, our great artists, and Boston's veterans community. Thank you to all who had anything to do with today. Enjoy the day. Thank you, Mayor. We are very fortunate in this um, city not only to have a mayor that leads us, but also to have great leadership at the Commonwealth. It's now my pleasure to introduce the governor of the, this great Commonwealth, Charlie Baker. Thank you, Ryan, and, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving me a chance to join you all today. Um, I do want to add two names to those that uh, the mayor introduced earlier. One is uh, Veterans Affairs Secretary Francisco Urena, uh, who does a terrific job of advocating for and representing all veterans here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I am not surprised you're here. <laughs> I also just want to introduce Sheriff uh, Jerry McDermott, who is no stranger to Boston and no stranger to this neighborhood. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I just want to start with a personal note, which is 
Um, our oldest son is getting married on Saturday, and as I thought about that, which is really the only thing I'm thinking about at the moment, um, I was reminded that uh, my wife and I lived in this neighborhood uh, before we got married, and we actually had the blood test that you're required to have before you can get a marriage license at the Joseph Smith Community Health Center um, 32 years ago, right around now, because we got married. We got married in September of, of 1987, and uh, I, um, which means I've really been thinking a lot about family, and um, and I think one of the things that's particularly important about this event and about ceremonies like this that take place around the city and around the Commonwealth and around the country um, is they are statements about family. Um, I live on a street called Monument Ave in Swampscott, which is where my wife and I and our kids live for the better part of the past 20 years. And it's called Monument Ave because it is the street in Swampscott that has every major conflict that the U.S. has been involved in dating back to the Civil War and going all the way through the War on Terror, um, represented by monuments that are on the boulevard on that street. And the Korean War Memorial is literally at the end of my driveway. And, uh, and I am reminded every single day of the sacrifices that families make when they say yes to their son or their daughter or their mother or their father or their brother or their sister who goes off to serve this country in uniform and potentially in harm's way. And one of the things I hear over and over again from the families and from the folks who serve is how important it is that their commitment and especially their sacrifice is never forgotten. And I think in many ways for all of us, uh, an opportunity like this to remember and to never forget and to ensure that this man and his family will be remembered and honored by the community that he grew up in for all time's sake, is truly one of the most important things we can do to say thank you from a grateful nation to those who serve. Now, when you live on a street like the one I live on, you see families all the time on a sunny or a rainy weekend day coming up, sometimes two or three generations of them, and just spending a few minutes in front of the Vietnam Memorial, or the War on Terror Memorial, or the Korean Memorial, or the World War II Memorial. Because it is a statement that Swampscott makes about never forgetting and speaking to the gratitude that our community has for those sons and daughters who served and in some cases were lost. So when I got the message from your friend and ours, Brian Golden, about this event, I asked if I could come. And Brian, being the good sport that he is, <laughs> said he would get back to me. <laughs> But really, I just want to say, on behalf of the Commonwealth, thank you to the Casey family, because that's really what today is all about. And I especially want to say thank you to the mayor, who time and time again has stepped up over and over to ensure that the veterans that he represents in the city of Boston and their families are, in fact, never forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. This dedication ceremony would not be possible without the generosity of one of our great community partners, Boston College.
Because of the contributions from the Boston College Neighborhood Improvement Fund, we now have the beautiful plaque that you see up here at the top of the steps of the amphitheater. Boston College worked closely with artist Pablo Eduardo on this project, and the end result is just beautiful. Uh, representing Boston College, I'd now like to invite to the podium Vice President of Government and Community Affairs, Tom Keedy. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, on behalf of Father William P. Leahy and the Boston College community, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the dedication of the Casey Amphitheater and compelling bronze memorial relief of Major General Casey by noted sculptor Pablo Eduardo. The project was made possible through a $100,000 Neighborhood Improvement Fund grant from Boston College to the Parks and Recreation Department. The NIF grant established in 2014 funds projects that improve and enhance the public realm in Alston and Brighton. The memorial relief was, select, was a selected by the Boston College Task Force, some members are here today, Boston College and the City of Boston through a competitive grant process. To date, this fund has awarded over $1.6 million in grants to the local community. Thank you. This inspiring work not only beautifies Smith Park, but serves as a lasting reminder of General Casey's heroicism, educating all who gather here about a favorite son of Alston. As many of you know, I was born and raised in Alston. Playing and coaching with the Alston North Little League for over 18 years in this very park, which now has General Casey's bust. I am pleased that this amphitheater and Pablo sculpture, sculpture will be here to honor the life of one of our own for generations to come. It is a source of pride for this community and for Boston College is so proud to have played a role in telling General Casey's story today. In closing, I'd like to uh, thank General Casey, George Casey Jr., a friend of Judge Muses, who's here with us today, Mrs. Elaine Casey Murphy, and the extended Casey family for your service and sacrifice. And it is an honor and privilege to share this special day with you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'd now uh, like to reintroduce the West Point Band to perform Mansions of the Lord.
Mr. Brian Kincannon is the civil aide to the Secretary of the Army from Massachusetts. He's a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. And like Father Hurley, he served as the field artillery officer in the Army. He made his career as a leader in the healthcare industry, ultimately leading Massachusetts-based Hemonetics, the world's largest blood management company. Please welcome to the podium, Brian Kincannon. Governor Baker, Mayor Walsh, General Casey, and the entire Casey family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to be here today. It's a real honor as a local boy. You know, here in Boston and in Massachusetts, we live in a very patriotic part of the country. If someone sees a soldier in uniform, they'll normally stop and thank them for their service. They're grateful, but for many that comes with the hope that their sons and daughters don't have to serve. Now this sounds like a, a criticism of our citizens, but I assure you it's not. It's more a call to action for our Army and for the responsibility we have in educating our people about the tremendous opportunities they have serving in our, in our Army represents for our young men and women. Army Week Boston this past April was a start in addressing this challenge locally. And Governor Baker, Mayor Walsh, thank you for your support in helping to make this event such a great success. We will endeavor with your team to make this an even bigger and better event next year. Now education is important, but our people also need examples to follow and to inspire them. Examples like Major General George W. Casey. By dedicating this amphitheater in his name, we honor Major General Casey, a man who served his country in Japan at the end of World War II, at Heartbreak Ridge in Korea, and three tours of duty in Vietnam. As we know, in his third tour as the commander of the 1st Cavalry Division, he was tragically killed in a helicopter crash. He was the highest ranking American officer killed in the Vietnam War. Major General Casey is one of our sons who served their country with distinction and someone who was born and raised in this great city, not far from this amphitheater that will bear his name forever. So why do I say examples are important? I dare say that the example Major General Casey was for his own son played a part in inspiring our 36th Chief of Staff of the Army. Today, this amphitheater will now stand as a tribute to Major General Casey's legacy. And think about this. Who knows how many more of our sons and daughters this amphitheater and Major General Casey's example may inspire in the years to come. On behalf of the Acting Secretary of the Army, Ryan McCarthy, I want to thank all who made this tribute possible. And General Casey, sir, to you and your family, I pass along the Secretary's regards. I thank you for the contribution you've made to our Army, for the sacrifices you've made to our country, and for the great example that you and your family continue to be for us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. I'd now like to invite yet another great friend of the Boston Parks Department, the Director of Boston Planning and Development Authority, Brian Golden, to the podium. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all of you who've come to visit with us today to celebrate this special occasion, this special dedication. Thanks to those who petitioned for the memorial a few years ago to the vets who served. Uh, there are so many of them here this afternoon. I want to thank the uniform personnel uh, for joining us. Uh, like the mayor and governor, I especially want to salute and thank the Casey family, General Casey, and his mom, Mrs. Elaine Casey Murphy. She's originally from West Roxbury and the widow of Major General Casey. Uh, she can't be with us today, but Mrs. Casey, Thank you for your profound service and sacrifice as you and your family served this nation. I'd like to tell you the story of this memorial. In 2005, I was preparing to deploy to Iraq as a reservist. One morning, Ellie Hallam of Alston, Millie's with us, Ellie Hallam of Alston stopped me at St. Anthony's Church. 
Ellie was with us two years ago for the groundbreaking, but she went home to God three months ago, and I'm hoping that she and Major General Casey join us today from the absolute best seats possible. <laughs> so Ellie told me to look for General Casey when I got to Iraq, General Casey the Younger. She told me that he was a general in a significant role and that his father was from Franklin Street. She told me that his father was also a general in the Army and that he died in Vietnam. I was astounded by this. I'd never heard the story, even though I'd spent my whole life in this neighborhood. And by 2005, I'd spent a significant portion of my adult life in the Army. So when I got to Baghdad, I did meet General Casey. He told me about visiting his grandparents on Franklin Street and about his father's life in Boston and his service career. I learned that he was one of the highest ranking U.S. Army officers to die in Vietnam. When I came home, I learned that lots of neighbors did know this story of Major General Casey and his family, but there was no memorial of any kind to ensure the survival of this story. So some of the local VFW membership, people like Bob Dunn, the very first Vietnam veteran I ever befriended, uh, and Phil Guilfoyle, they're here with us today, we began to talk about what should be done to tell the story of General Casey. There was a neighborhood petition drive. I've got to give a shout out to my mom, the champion uh, signature gatherer. <laughs> Hundreds of people signed this petition. Mayor Marty Walsh and Parks Commissioner Chris Cook and now Parks Commissioner Ryan Woods, they embraced the cause enthusiastically, helping to identify a concept, a site, and resources that could bring the memorial to fruition. And here we are. It really has been a family affair. I, my sister, Kathy, in the back row, has worked very closely with the artist, the sculptor, Pablo Eduardo, coordinating the artwork with the VFW and the city to ensure that we have a magnificent piece of public art in Smith Park. And my five kids have been playing roles. And even today, we celebrate my beautiful Deirdre's birthday. She's 12 right now. I thank them for the time that they've put into this effort in my absence on occasion uh, as we've pursued this effort over the past 14 years. A couple days ago, I received a letter from General Joe Dunford. General Dunford of Boston is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he wrote, quote, no words can adequately express the debt of gratitude we owe Major General Casey and his family's support and sacrifice. I join his hometown of Boston, the great state of Massachusetts, and each of you in remembering and honoring one of our nation's most beloved sons." Unquote. Major General Casey lived the truth that there can be no greater love than to lay down one's life for friends. He was one of us, and he must continue to be one of us. Our history, our identity, the amphitheater is accompanied by this beautiful bronze relief portrait of General Casey by sculptor Pablo Eduardo. Pablo works all over the world, but lives here in Metro Boston. Through his work, he has added so much to the life of this city, to its beauty and its sense of itself. Thank you, Pablo, for your latest creation. It will be a meaningful, presence here in perpetuity. The amphitheater will be a place of joy, and General Casey will be right in the middle of it. He will be remembered here, but his story on the sculpture will also present a challenge. The memorial essentially asks you this question. Are you living a life today that is worthy of his sacrifice? And maybe 
That prompts us to be more selfless, maybe more committed to doing good during our brief time on this earth. And when we think of the hundreds of thousands who've laid down their lives or suffered tremendously for us, it becomes more humbling, more compelling. Hopefully, we can all do something good with that reminder. When he died, Major General Casey was laid to rest near the grave of another Bostonian, President John Kennedy, at Arlington National Cemetery. He lies in honored glory there. But with this memorial, he's now home with us, here in Boston, here in Alston. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's my pleasure now to introduce General George W. Casey, Jr. General Casey graduated from Boston College High School, Georgetown University, and was commissioned an officer in the United States Army in 1970. He rose to the rank of four-star general, serving as commander of the multinational force Iraq from 2004 to 2007, and as chief of staff of the United States Army, the nation's highest ranking Army officer from 2007 to 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General George Casey, Jr. I learned something once when I was the Army Chief, and that's when generals say stop clapping, they mean stop clapping. <laughs> Sometimes when politicians say stop clapping, they don't mean that. <laughs> to share that. Brian, thank you very much for that kind introduction, and, and thank you for placing me last of eight speakers in following you. <laughs> that is definitely a tough act to follow. Uh, Governor Baker, Mayor Walsh, what, you, what you've done here is, is a one, will be a wonderful addition to the Austin community, and, and, and thank everyone for this wonderful tribute to Dad. You know, the fact that, as everyone said it, he's 400 yards from here was where he grew up, and he used to sell programs at Harvard Stadium during football games. So the fact that this is so close it means that much more to our families. Uh, and we've thanked everybody. Pablo, Eduardo, please raise, wave your hand. I want people to see you. I visited Pablo at his studio while he was working on the project. Nothing better for an artist to have a general looking over your shoulder. While you're doing it. But, but his commitment to capturing Dad uh, was monumental, and I, we really appreciate the extra effort that you did on that. Um, thank everyone who had something to do with this, and especially Brian Golden. As he said, more than 12 years ago, we, we first talked about the idea uh, in my office in Baghdad, and so Brian. Perseverance is still highly underrated as a virtue. Um, as I thought about this memorial, I, I realized that while it is, it is a wonderful tribute to Dad, it's also a great tribute to the extended Casey family, the Austin community, and to the men and women who fought so valiantly for this country in Vietnam more than 50 years ago. Families of the fallen from every war want to know that their loved one's sacrifice was necessary, was appreciated, and will never be forgotten. To be honest with you, there were, there were days when I wasn't sure that that was going to be the case for dad or the fallen from Vietnam. But over time, largely through memorials like this, I've come to believe that the country will never turn its back on its military again and that our fallen from Vietnam will not be forgotten. So thank you very much for that.
Can I just ask any Vietnam vets here, if I can ask you to stand up or raise your hand, please? Dad's family was a second generation immigrant family from Ireland. And when his grandfather, Thomas Wynn Casey, uh, left Ireland at the age of 18 to find a better life in America, he left with an eighth grade education and, and not much else. But Thomas Casey understood the value of education. All, and he ensured that all seven of his children graduated college. Dad's father, Dr. John Casey, graduated Colby College and Columbia Medical School before signing on to St. Elizabeth's. And as you heard from the mayor, he was there for quite a while. And the chances are that if you're my age or older and you're from Alston or Brighton, Dr. Casey probably brought you into this world. <laughs> now, he met and married a Boston girl, Elizabeth McDermott, and they settled it right, right down the road here on Franklin Street and raised a proper-sized proper -sized Irish family of seven, five boys, and two girls. And like their aunts and uncles, all seven graduated college. Four Harvard, one Boston State, one BU, and one West Point. All five boys served this country during time of war. Four in the Army and one malcontent who went in the Navy. <laughs> Three of them served in World War II, Tom in the Pacific uh, with the Americal Division in Guadalcanal and Bougainville, Ed in France and Germany, and John, the oldest, served in both, in both theaters. John received a Silver Star, our nation's third highest award for valor uh, for actions in Guadalcanal, and a Bronze Star for actions in Germany. Two of the brothers, my dad and Bill, served in, in the Korean War, and dad served in Vietnam. I firmly believe that the Casey family's story of service is representative of many other families from the Austin community during that era. Dad's parents and siblings have all passed away, but they're represented today by several generations of Casey. So can I ask all the Casey's to stand up or wave your hands, please? <laughs> Um, Dad graduated West Point in 1945, so my special thanks to the band for making the trip down here. West Point was always a, a huge part of his life. <laughs> you, you heard about my mom. They, they got married shortly after he graduated. My mom claims that she pursued him shamelessly, and, and she caught him. Uh, they raised five children, uh, myself, my brother Peter, and my sisters, uh, Joan, Wink, and Ann. Uh, Joan and, and Ann are here today uh, with their husbands, uh, my, as is my wife, Sheila, uh, my son, Ryan, and my grandson, Connor Casey. Um, five of his 14 grandchildren are here, and one, as I said, of his great-grandchildren are here. And, and I say that... <laughs> I say that because when a soldier falls in battle, the, the impact is multi-generational. Uh, you heard my mom was ill. She turned 93 two weeks ago, and she is recovering from a stroke. Uh, hopefully, she'll she'll recover, and we'll, we'll get her back to uh, back on her feet again. Um, a little bit about Dad. Now, he graduated too late for, from West Point, too late for World War II, and is relegated uh, to uh, occupation duty in Japan. Uh, he went on to serve in Korea, where he was awarded the Silver Star for actions on Heartbreak Ridge. And as you heard, he served three tours in Vietnam and earned two more Silver Stars uh, before he was killed with six others in a helicopter crash on the 7th of July, 1970. He, at that time, he was leading the 1st Air Cavalry Division on a very successful operation into the Parrot's Peak in Cambodia. Uh, he was on his way, as you can see from the plaque, he was on his way to Cameron Bay to visit wounded soldiers from that operation. Now, 
I, I think it's common knowledge that generals and journalists uh, didn't get along very well during Vietnam. So, so as I struggled to find a way to describe Dad as a man and as a soldier, I, I found it striking that a journalist, Frank Reynolds from a ABC News, had captured him best. And he captured him in a commentary that he did ab about Dad and General Thon, a Vietnamese general uh, who was killed in the same operation. And he aired, this aired on the 9th of July, 1970, while Dad's helicopter was still missing. And here's what Frank Reynolds said. He says, it seems fair to say that professional soldiers are not at the top of the list of the most admired men in America these days. For many people, just to hear the words, the generals in the Pentagon or the generals in Vietnam, is to think of heartless types, concerned only with personal glories, uh, caring nothing about the men that they commit to battle. Perhaps that was not an entirely inaccurate account of high commands in past wars. But it is completely wrong in this one. General George Casey, the commander of the 1st Air Cavalry Division, now missing in Vietnam, was one of those men who had soldier written all over him. There was no trace of the martinet in him. He was a man for whom the responsibilities of high command were much more important than the privileges. He accepted all of the first. He abused none of the second. General Casey and General Thon knew war and hated it, perhaps more so than the rest of it. They were splendid examples of military men who weren't militaristic. We don't give them much credit these days, as some of us shout and all of us long for peace now, but it is still an imperfect world. In the time when it will certainly come, when not only will the George Caseys of this world be needed, they might even be appreciated. Well, 49 years later, Frank Reynolds was right. George Casey has certainly been appreciated today and by the city that he loved. So on behalf of my mother and the entire Casey family, thank you very much for this wonderful recognition of a father, uh, a soldier, and a man. Thank you. Thank you, General Casey. Your father's a true hero who will always be remembered here in Boston. Thank you again for coming to this dedication for the Major General George W. Casey Amphitheater at Smith Playground. There are many great memories to be made on that stage, and we hope that you can all join us again in a few weeks when we do an official grand opening for the new beautiful park. This concludes our formal speaking program, but I'd like to invite all of you to say hello to the Casey family after the program. And since Major General Casey was 1st Cavalry Division Commander, the Brass Quintet will now play Gary Owen, the regimental song from the 1st Cavalry Division, followed immediately by the Army song, which I believe everyone has lyrics or near them, so please join in. Um, and please stand and join us in the singing. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you.